Hi everyone. In this video, I wanted to look at a new option we see in the portal when we create a virtual machine, which is, hey, go and create a VM in multiple availability zones, which is kind of a strange concept. We're used to the idea of creating redundant services by having instances spread over multiple availability zones, um, or maybe it's just inherent to the service, but why now when I create a VM, is it giving me the option to create over multiple availability zones? So what exactly is it? So if we quickly go and look at the portal, we can see this new option. So right down here, and it's being rolled out right now. You have the availability options as normal. Hey, do you wanna deploy this to an availability zone, a VM scale set, or an availability set? But if I pick availability zone, well I can now do a checkbox. I could select multiple availability zones. And the description is even telling me that. Hey, you can now select multiple zones and it will create one VM per zone. And that's really the key point in what this new portal option is doing. So if we take a step back for a second, we're used to the idea of a region. Hey, we have a certain region and there are many regions in Azure, but we have this great big region that we think of as this two millisecond round trip latency envelope. So that keeps the different physical locations that make up that region within a certain geographical distance. And then obviously there are data centers. There are many data centers. Now I can deploy to the region. I don't have to use availability zones. And in that case, if I deploy to the region, well, the compute resource provider can just deploy my VM to any cluster it wants over any of those data centers that make up the region. But from a resiliency perspective, if I think about, hey, there are data centers, so obviously individual data centers, hey, that's great, that helps protect me from something at a data center level. But realize there's a certain amount of common services to some of these things. Water for cooling, networking, power. And so what also happens is, there's this idea of grouping sets of those data centers. And I just drew three for one, two for one. It, it might be more data centers, it might be less, but they get grouped into these availability zones. Now I'm writing it as AZ1, AZ2, AZ3, realizing your particular Azure subscription, it maps independently. So one subscription, what you see as AZ1 in your subscription may point to this set of data centers. AZ1 in a different subscription may point to this. There's no consistency over different subscriptions. They mix them around, otherwise everyone probably deploys to AZ1, so one set will get super, super um, overused. Now one of the key points and the idea of this is each set of these data centers that make up availability zones well, they have independent power, i.e. maybe they go into different substations, cooling, and networking. So it's not just about resiliency at the physical building for maybe a fire or flood, but if there was some power outage or water problem and networking, each of these different sets have resilient, isolated services of those. So a power failure, for example, for this set wouldn't affect these other sets of data centers. And we leverage this. Now I can think about when I deploy services, I can absolutely deploy my service as zone redundant. Now zone redundant, there could be services like the standard load balancer. I can deploy that as zone redundant and I don't really think anything of it. I say, hey, I wanna create a standard load balancer and make it zone redundant, well that service just spans the availability zones. Behind the scenes there are SLB muxes that take in the traffic, there are components on the host themselves, but it is available across all of the availability zones in, within that region, three AZs. So my service is resilient. There are SLB muxes in play, so that yes, that SLB is in AZ1, but actually, the reality is, let's draw this out a bit differently, that SLB is actually spread across multiple availability zones. So it's kind of spread across all three of them. So this would be a zone 
redundant. There's nothing I have to do other than say, hey, I want it to be zone redundant. Public IPs, I can create a zone redundant. SLB, great. Other services, especially ones that are compute focused, can't just magically be zone redundant. Um, a virtual machine runs on a host. It's virtualizing the CPU. It's virtualizing the memory of a physical box. I can't have CPUs spread over multiple data centers. It just doesn't work that way. And so more often than not, what we get are zonal services, i.e. I could create a VM in AZ1. So that VM would actually get pinned to a certain data center in that particular AZ. So I create it in that particular availability zone. So I have that as well. So then how do I think about doing zone redundant for computer services? So I know I can do it. I can create a VM scale set, zone redundant. I can create an AKS node pool, which sits on top of a VM scale set. I can do an app service plan. How does this work? Well, so if I now go back and think about zone redundant for my compute services, how does it do it? Well, it has to create an instance in each of the zones. If it was a VM scale set or an AKS node pool, an app service plan, I have to have instances. Hey, I'll have one instance in here. I'll have one instance in another AZ and another instance in another. And the point is they can all run the workload and often they'll sit behind another zone redundant service like a standard load balancer that's zone redundant to balance the requests through the health probe. Hey, this one, this AZ has got a problem, send it to the remaining ones. So I can make it zone redundant by having multiple instances. And once again, we'll see that. If I just jumped over for a second to think like an app service plan, that I can absolutely create as zone redundant, it's gonna tell me. So I can scroll down and say, hey, look, zone redundancy is disabled. If I set it to enabled, which I can do, but notice what it says here. The minimum count will have to be three because it can't do magic. If it's disabled, hey, I can just have one. But this is the key point. Most computer services, to make them zone redundant, it's zone redundant because what it's going to do is just have instances in each of the availability zones. And then through something like a standard load balancer or a gateway, something else will balance the requests to those instances, check are they healthy or not, and then do this. So things like, again, virtual machine scale sets, AKS node pools that are zone redundant, which use virtual machine scale sets, app service plans, all take this model. So hopefully that makes sense. Some services can be zone redundant because, hey, there's some SDN component, but behind the scenes, they just have parts that make up that SDN, like the load balancer marks in all of the availability zones, and that's your instance. It's doing it for you. More compute focused, hey, I can't just magically have one VM with its virtualized CPU and memory across three different boxes in three availability zones. It doesn't work, virtualization doesn't work that way. I can't sync CPU instructions uh, across three different processes. The performance will be horrible. So that's how we make its own redundant. So then what is this thing? What is this new option doing then that is saying, hey, I wanna create a virtual machine, but I'm gonna do it through some magical. Hey, I want to create a VM. I want, oh, pick about a region that actually has availability zones would be good, John. But now I can pick multiple ones. What magic thing is this doing? Is there some wizardry involved? And the answer obviously is no. This is really geared towards, I'm starting out in Azure. I don't maybe understand some of the other constructs that are available to me, but I know, hey, I want to be resilient as best I can within the region by having some instances over multiple availability zones. So what is this doing? This option is gonna create VMs in each of those availability zones. 
That, that's all it's doing. It's not using virtual machine scale sets, uniform or flexible. There's not any magic going on. This is simply an easier way from the portal to create multiple VMs through one set of actions. So someone's fairly new to Azure. Hey, I, I know I want to use this AZ thing because I hear it's good from a resiliency HA perspective. That's all this is doing. It's just gonna go and basically create separate VMs. And you can see it when you actually look in a bit more detail of what it's doing. You can see pretty clearly, hey look, it's gonna create you three VMs, dash one, dash two, dash three. You can edit those names if you want based on, hey, the first selected zone, second selected zone, and third selected zone. If you were doing things like public IPs, it would create three public IPs. But it's not doing anything beyond that. It is not then, hey, adding them to a VMSS flex, for example, to help you in the future. It isn't using virtual machine scale sets behind the scenes. I'm not gonna get auto scale. This is literally just, hey, I'm a small customer. I'm starting out. I don't really understand some of the other constructs. How can I really easily just spin up multiple VMs in AZs? That's all that is doing. So realize if you are a bit more ahead on the journey, I'd probably rather use a virtual machine scale set. I would rather use a virtual machine scale set. It could be uniform if they're all the same VM SKU, or I could use flex and a profile to create some. If I need maybe mixed SKUs, I wanna be able to operate and manage them as a unit. I can use things like custom script extensions to install apps. I could use the guest policy, the machine configuration to set a declarative state. I could use the new VM applications from the compute gallery to lay things down into those images. So there are many things I could do as a, as a better option, I think, once you're a bit more advanced. So yes, there's this nice portal option to create VMs in multiple AZs through one series of clicks. But ideally, I'd rather use something like a VM scale set. I think that's gonna give you a better set of functionality. Now realize maybe my scenario is actually different. Maybe my scenario is more, hey, I do only have one VM. My app can't run over more than one VM and I'm trying to get it resilient across multiple AZs. Well, that is not gonna do this because that portal action is gonna create three virtual machines. If I have this scenario where I can only have this unicorn, this one super special virtual machine that can only have this single instance, well, one option I could leverage to make it resilient would be to use things like Azure Site Recovery. You can now replicate to another zone in the same region. So absolutely, if you think behind the scenes, this has its storage, so it's using a managed disk. One option I could be doing here is with Azure Site Recovery, replicate that. So then if there was a problem in this zone, hey, I could very easily spin it up, start it up in another zone. Another option could be I could have a zone redundant managed disk. There's always three copies of your managed disk. Normally it's locally redundant. All three copies are spread over a storage cluster in the same AZ. But I could do ZRS. So then my Unicorn VM's disk could just have those three copies scattered over one copy there, one copy there, one copy there. And then if the AZ had a problem, I could recreate the VM in another zone using that disk, which would be available to me. It's gonna be more work, it's gonna be slower, but depending on my recovery time objective, how long I have to start up in the event of a problem, maybe that's a cheaper option, maybe that's something I wanna do. So there are different ways of accomplishing it. But realize, if I have this unicorn and only one can run, well then multiple instances may not help me. I can use something like Azure Site Recovery to replicate to another zone or to another region. But this new portal option is just creating three separate VMs, just one in each zone. Again, designed for those small, getting started. My preference and the recommendation would be if you want these kind of zone redundant, really look at the virtual machine scale set. Then it can do auto scale to optimize based on load. I can have that template. I can have those sets of ways to install the apps. I don't need this special custom image to do things. And then I get the benefit of the manageability on top of that. So that clears up what that's doing. That was really just the, the point to avoid any confusion. And as always, till next video, take care.